Hi, this is your host, Laura Powers, and I'm so pleased to have back on the show Dr. Todd Watts. He is a doctor, an entrepreneur, all around great guy. He's been on the show a couple of times if you've heard those episodes before. And we're here to talk about uh, parasites, underlying health conditions, and viruses, which I think is a really relevant topic right now. So that's why I asked uh, Todd to be back on the show. So thanks for being on the show. For those who haven't listened to your other episodes, can you give just a very brief overview of how you got into what you do and, and making your line of supplement? Yeah, so I, um, I had my own health journey, like a lot of us do. And uh, at 28, I had Epstein-Barr virus that put me down that road. And then by my late, late 30s, early 40s, um, struggled with Lyme disease, Babesia, Bartonella, some of the co-infections that go with Lyme disease. And so in, in overcoming my own health journey, um, becoming a doctor in my 40s uh, and going back through that process, um, I realized that what I was doing to try and get myself better, some of it worked a little bit, but, but there's always a lot of key parts missing and the, and the process was it wasn't done right. And so uh, I, I was able to uh, come across a product called Mimosa Pudica Seed that I brought to the world, the healthcare market uh, throughout the world, and then also um, then created and formulated other products for parasites, uh, clearing those out of the body, and then by, um, other products I have um, combined with a, another scientist um, and a, a group of scientists that had created products that do phenomenal at binding toxins and removing toxins and glyphosates and um, biotoxins and mycotoxins and things that create dysfunction in the mitochondria in the body um, out and then also learn, you know, figured out with working with thousands of people, okay, what's the process I need to get through this? Like, how can I take my 10 year journey of health and, yeah. and, and make, it, make it shorter, a, a one year journey for somebody that, that has, is really sick or a two year journey versus a 10 year journey. So uh, Dr. J Davidson and I have um, put our heads together and working with some other uh, scientists and doctors do put a protocol together that, that takes people through the journey that they should go through when you have chronic illness or chronic problems, even acute problems, it can really help amazingly, but especially the, on the chronic stuff, because there really isn't really good answers out there and functional medicine, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't really address the root cause. It says, Oh, we'll go after the root cause. No, they're going after lab work, right? They're going after yeah. lab testing and, and they're not looking and they're, and they're supporting with nutrients, not looking at, well, I'd say you should get nutrients from your food. Um, let's get rid of what's creating the problem. How about if we go after the cause? Why is there a dysfunction? What, what's, yeah. Why do people have five different things that they're infected with right now? Why do they have three viruses, Lyme, parasites, all at the same time? So then it's going back to that root thing of there's immune system dysfunction, and then where does that go to? There's a mitochondrial dysfunction. So that's where we need to look at things. And so we created a protocol and process that takes people through a four-phase, five-phase process to address all of these, these different underlying processes um, and using you know, science and research and as well as a lot of hours clinically to, to do it. And then we, we tie it in and what the relationship is between a lot of these different things so people can understand, well, do I address parasites first? Do I address mycotoxins first, mold? Do I address Lyme first? What, what do I do? It's confusing. Do I do, a, you, you know, it's, do I need to do heavy metals first? Do I, you know, what, what is going on out there? So we help people understand that right protocol to do that. Yeah. And I think this is really, really important because I feel like almost everyone has one of these, you know, things going on with them, mold, mm -hmm. parasites, you know, heavy metals, just because of the society that we live on and, and what we're exposed to on a regular basis. Unfortunately, I feel like when you go to a standard doctor, these kinds of things aren't being addressed. And it's not until they get really acute that a person is being treated. And then a lot of times they're treating whatever is acute, but not whatever caused that acute issue to start in the first place, which is, I think, what you were just discussing. And one of the things that's been occurring to me as we're watching, you know, this, this real crisis in the country unfold with coronavirus is that there are a lot of people that think they are healthy because they don't have an acute illness, but they're really not. Like, if you were really to, like, if you were to look at them and I were to look at them psychically, I'd be like, oh, you got a lot of stuff going on, but you just don't have an acute illness. So I think we need to change this bar that we have in terms of like what is health and what is not health. I don't think to be healthy means you just don't have an acute illness, you know, where you're literally in the hospital. <laughs> and, and what's happening now is that coronaviruses and these types of viruses, they are really bringing all that to the surface. And in a way, there's a, there's a blessing to this, which is it's really getting people to look at their health on a deeper level. I hope, I hope that's happening. I know that's happening for me is like, wow, I really got to be strong. 
And, uh, and I think the parasite piece is really key. Uh, I just feel like almost everyone I know probably has like a bunch of parasites and these things. Sure. What has your been experience? Because I, and by the way, I want to share with everyone that when I first interviewed um, Todd, I hadn't tried the supplement yet. And I was like, you know, maybe I have parasites. And I remember like, hearing you talk and I was like, oh yeah, I think I have some of those things. Like, and then I tried the supplements and I was like blown away by right. what came out and what I <laughs> was experiencing and how bad the problem really was. And sure. again, I've had a health podcast for years. I've been seeing practitioners for years. And so I just want everyone to know that just because you don't have obvious signs of parasites doesn't mean that you don't actually have a huge parasite problem because that's what was going on with me. <laughs> It's really interesting. I, I met with a practitioner today, she's a functional diagnostic nutrition expert, um, practitioner, FDN. And, um, you know, they run all these different tests, you know, and that's what we do in functional medicine is run all these different tests. So we had, uh, you know, a GPL tox test. So we had a glyphosate test. There was a, um, a GI map test for like your stools. Um, there, there was obviously blood work there. They do an O test, all these different amazing tests, but, nothing looked really, nothing looked unnormal. It was all pretty yeah. normal stuff, right? So, but she knew stuff's wrong because like, wait a second, there's, I'm still tired. I still struggle with certain aspects, a lot of allergies. So in going through and analyzing her to her today, it was just like, well, you got a tapeworm, you know, that was one of her issues and then liver flukes and uh, nematodes. And it's like, look, if you clear these things out and then there's mold up in your sinuses, we, we clear that stuff out, you're going to be a whole new person. Your allergies will yeah. be gone. Your, your sinus issues, chronic sinus issues will be gone. Your fatigue will be gone. And so then, you, then I teach, I'll say, this is the thing. When you're looking at what these you know, parasites, for example, can do is they can release toxins that suppress energy production in the mitochondria, which then makes you tired. Right. And mitochondria is like, like so necessary. So we don't like age quickly and, you know, yeah. have our health and yeah, really important. <laughs> How do you make hormones? How do you make neurotransmitters? How do you repair your body? How do you eat and digest food? I mean, all, all these things that require uh, these processes or reactions in the body require energy. And a lot of them do. A big a majority of them do. So without the, the ATP molecule to do that, then you, how do you move forward with it? And then outside yeah. the cell, that, that same thing is used to, uh, to go through and signal the immune system. So if, if you have low function of the mitochondria, then you're going to have low immune function right? and you're going to be tired. And you know, it could be as simple as, Oh, I'm just a little bit tired. It could be, I have, a, Oh, I have some skin rash issues. Oh, I get, I get headaches. Um, I can't sleep. I have seasonal allergies. You know, th yeah. these are all things that you can have a parasite with and you don't have any idea. You just think, Oh, it's something else. And you know, I have brain fog, but then you could also say, well, I have a chronic viral infection. Why well, can't get rid of this virus? And then you realize what the immune function of parasites, to the, the parasites do um, on the TH1, TH2 systems that it can cause a viral replication. And yeah, um, can you talk more about that? Because I've just recently kind of been understanding a little bit more of that. And I've also uh, been trying biomagnetic pair therapy. Are you familiar yeah. with that? Okay. And I found that very helpful for certain things. But one of the things they talk about is like, if you have viruses, you probably have parasites. So they really, they have an understanding of that sort of matching that's happening. So now I look at this viral thing that's going around like crazy. I'm like, oh, lots of parasites. <laughs> that's the thing. But can you talk about that mechanism that you just kind of glossed over a moment ago, sure. the replication piece, and why, why is there this connection between parasites and viruses? So, so in the research, it shows in, in, our, in, their, in our bodies, there's two main immune parts that work. Now there's some other things, TH17, but TH1 and TH2, T upper one cells, T upper two cells. The T upper two cells really go more after like parasites. The T upper one cells are more after the viruses, maybe Lyme, protozoans. And so our goal is if we get infected by a virus, the TH1 comes up, we go after it, kills it off, brings it back down, and you're fine. Um, but it, the chronic issue with parasites is that they can raise, helminths can raise TH2 up. It releases this protein, a cytokine, so inflammatory cytokine that comes over to the TH1 side and, and um, binds onto the receptor site over there on the macrophage. So when it does this, it causes a turn on uh, of genetic process to turn viruses to, to start replicating. And it also wow. suppresses the immune system from working. So now you have a viral problem or chronic Lyme problem and you have a parasite problem because one side's down. So now these microbes can go crazy when, when what's going on over here is the parasites are creating the problem. 
and, and that's and when viruses and blockers. bacteria or just back or viruses alone no it, it could be lyme you know it's bacteria okay. it could be uh, yeah. protozoans which is another type of microscopic parasites that more is geared towards the other but the virus the viruses can replicate the, the turning on the genetic coding for the viruses to replicate is is on on that side and not necessarily lyme to replicate it does it on its own as a as a bacteria um so you know, the, just that correlation of when I'm working on somebody like, oh, I got Lyme disease and co-infections and four different viruses and like, okay, what don't you have? Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, is, it really, is it really an infection problem or is it more of an immune system dysfunction? So mm -hmm. I, I look at it from an immune system dysfunction. Okay, what can create that immune system dysfunction? Well, one thing, just one thing is parasites. Two, mold. Because mold comes in, I feel like it suffocates oxygen in the body, creates tons of uh, oxidative stress in the cells reduces severely reduces ATP production in the mitochondria. So then you can't even signal the immune system to function the way it needs to. Another thing is um, a, a big, big issue is radiation. Um, and we get a lot of radiation exposure through our water systems. Municipality water has high, high mass of radiation in it. Uh, you can look, look at uh, radiant water, start what? researching all that. And oh my gosh. One more reason not to drink tap water. Seriously, can you just talk about that with also parasites? Because I don't drink tap water like period. The only place I've ever drunk tap water since I stopped drinking tap water was in Iceland. And I felt like it was okay there. Yeah. Um, but why, why, okay, so we got the radiation issue, but there's, there's also, sometimes there can be parasites in the water, correct? Well, yeah, I've had, that was mind blowing to me because I was working with this couple, uh, probably in their 50s, 60s, um, professionals, 50s, they were one's a pharmacist and the other one's an engineer. So very, very medical minded um, in, in that area, very well trained, extremely intelligent people. And they had all these gut problems. So when we looked at it, I had them test their water. And um, sure enough, you, you know, you think it was gonna be their, their um, well water from their second home up in Rhode Island, but no, it was right, right there in Connecticut uh, in municipality water and it tested positive for nematode larvae in it. And it just was crazy. So right. we're like, well, maybe that was a mistake. So let's test our neighbor's water. That was positive. And they tested some business water downtown. That was positive. So they realized that, that it was an issue with the municipality water, that there's some type of thing producing. And that just really shocked me. I just I couldn't deny the results, but um, I just never expected that um, from, from the municipality water. And of course, they municipality just completely dismissed it like oh that testing is not valid parasite testing is not valid um and you, you know then they talk, talk to their neighbors as they said well yeah i have crohn's disease i have ulcerative colitis it's like they all had all these gi issues right. like yeah yeah issues yeah parasites jeez so so yeah um, so if you have major digestive issues so ulcerative colitis um uh, celiac disease, uh, allergies, food intolerances, like this is definitely something to look at is the parasite oh, sure. possibility. And even SIBO. So people that have like the small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, what's going on with that? And I've had many cases where we resolved it by clearing out either liver flukes or things that were blocking bile flow or um, just it was more of a parasitic infection that created the disruption. Um, also, sometimes it can be radiation. So radium in water um, can de deposit into your body and it's highly radioactive, but there's not much information out there. And the, the Environmental Working Group website has an interactive map to know your area where you live and how much mm -hmm. per municipality it is, is um, out there. They've done a fantastic job uh, on that. And what you realize is that 177 million people are exposed to higher amounts than they should be exposed to, according to yeah, EPA. I, EPA. This is all EPA numbers, right? So right. put together EPA numbers on, on it because you can't test for it yourself. Yeah, I feel like if you fix your water, that right there is going to resolve so many, so many issues. And I reached a point where I just suddenly I just started to get really sick. And I think what happened in my body is I reached this sort of max point and tap water started to make me sick and it never made me sick before. But I think my, my ability is on a body level to process everything that was coming in. And then the water itself was dirty on top of that was just like one thing too many. And that's when I realized I needed to stop drinking tap water. And I asked, I asked psychically, why am I sick? And I got, it's the water. And then I learned about fluoride. And, and then I learned, connected with you, I learned about, you know, other things that can be in the water. And it's just like, oh my gosh, I don't drink the tap water, guys. I really would, personally wouldn't uh, do it myself. <laughs> well, even um, well water. You know, yeah. I, I lived in a place that had well water. And what I realized is um, later on is in that whole area, there's, there's arsenic that's in the water in that, right. in that specific 
area. And so with the higher arsenic in the well water, then I started asking and found out in, in that whole, in, in that process, that specific geographical area, there's a high amount of MS in that area. Like, oh, hey, what do you know? So arsenic obviously creates mitochondrial dysfunction and con- all kinds of issues um, within the body. Um, you know, these toxic metals can create problems within the cells and the function. Right. Also glyphosate, glyphosate does all kinds of problems, uh, not only in, in the gut, but also the cell, cellular function that shuts down the mitochondria from working. And I was just watching, a, it was a, like a TEDx talk on uh, parasites and it was about, uh, I can't remember the name of that parasite, but the one that's like lots of cats have and you can get it from changing. Toxoplasma gondii. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's a long name. That's why I'm like, I can't remember. It's really long. Toxoplasma gondii, that one. Um, and they were saying in that TEDx video that a lot of municipalities, sometimes they will, they get overflow and instead of like doing their normal process of filtration, they just hyperchlorinate the water, but that parasite doesn't get killed by hyperchlorination. Yeah. And so I just feel like I've, I just get messages more and more like that, uh, that it's just not a good idea <laughs> to drink this, this water. And so let's say your municipality water has it and you, you drink, what happens? Like once, once they get in your body, what, what starts to happen, you know, in your digestive tract? So it depends on where, what type of parasite it is, but if it's a typical, say, uh, nematode, it's a roundworm in this case. And what is, what is a roundworm versus like, versus like a flatworm, which is like a tapeworm? Tapeworm. Uh-huh. And then there's yeah. flukes, which is a flat, but more, you know, looking thing. There's a um, liver flukes, which are extremely common, pancreatic flukes, intestinal flukes, lung flukes, uh, blood flukes. There's hookworms. Hookworms can create problems, especially in the bladder for women. Um, they cause bladder pain, urinary pain, chronic UTIs. Um, there's also uh, blood hookworms. So there's different types. Cystosoma hematobium, cystosoma uh, mansoni. There's the toxoplasma gondii. The toxoplasmosis is a protozoan, so the microscopic parasite. So, you know, they tell women that are pregnant, do not change kitty litter because they're going to hide the effect of fetus. What about people that, um, you know, or just normal people like us. Okay, when I'm not yeah. pregnant, I'll, I'll change the kitty litter. I can still get it and still have problems from it. Depends on where yeah. it gets to with my body and if my immune system's up enough to be able to address it or not. So um, there, was a, there, was a, there was a funny, it wasn't funny, an actual study that had some interesting findings. And I always laugh because I did this presentation in front of all these doctors. They're all these medical doctors, and PhDs, and um, I was one of two chiropractors there at the whole thing that presented. And, and so when I, when I did the study and we're still going through it, the, the thing with toxoplasma plasmosis was it created, it created in, um, women, the, the tendency, well, well created in men to first, promiscuous, promiscuous to cheat yeah. and men yeah. to be more aggressive. I was like, yeah. so it was, it was, it was, it the, was like, what? Really? Well, yeah, that's the thing that I just think is so important because this is very much tied in with you know, mental health, with our ability to be motivated, oh, goal oriented. So this isn't just a physical health issue. I mean, there's a physical health issue alone is obviously really significant and important, but this, yeah, this can affect your decision-making ability to have Most long-term vivid. impacts. And I really noticed as I've cleared out parasites in my body, how I'm so have so much more mental clarity and peace of mind, less anxiety. I think I was experiencing a lot of kind of anxiety and I guess I would call restlessness just this kind of like oh just like I don't know what I need I need something kind of feeling um and then once I you know was taking the supplements it just was amazing how much better I felt more at peace and so I think this is huge and a lot of people that suffer from anxiety have this and they don't realize it well the thing is with the anxiety is that there's several different types the hookworms the cystosomes the toxoplasmas the plasmosis the, those things will inhibit production of GABA. So they inhibit an enzyme called GAT67, which then create more glutamate and drive anxiety over giving us GABA, which is the inhibitory uh, neurotransmitter that helps to calm us down. And, and so then, then we're in a state of more anxiety all the time, harder to sleep, insomnia issues for people. And um, it's all from a parasite. You're like, what, really? But yeah. you know, other things can do it too. Toxins can drive that. And are we binding those toxins and clearing, clearing those toxins out? And we have one of the only binders, well, really the binder in the United States that shows to prove to, to bind and remove some of these pesticides and herbicides, glyphosates out of the body yeah. and reduce, reduce that amount because they can 
drive a lot of problems, especially depression in kids. It affects the whole neurotransmitter production in the gut and the bacteria uh, balance in there as well. And I think right now we're, we're at a real issue with food availability and maybe the, the availability of those kinds of foods that you like to get, you know, organic. I mean, you go to the grocery store and there's like, there's one kind of tomato or whatever, you know, that's all that's left. And so, uh, you know, if we can't get the normal uh, organic produce that we're used to getting, um, I think it's extra important to have this kind of thing. I also, I'm recommending for everyone to start growing some things at home hydroponically or whatever, just, just a suggestion. <laughs> but yeah, at least take, take this um, into the bioactive carbon. Is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. 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 And by the way, uh, for anyone who's interested in this, I highly recommend these supplements. I use them myself still. Um, it, I have a URL set up. It's tinyurl.com slash clear parasites. You want to learn more about them. I think they're incredible. So if you're, if you want to try these, let's talk about, you know, how do you start? Because you guys have so many different ones. I, I definitely feel like a lot of people should do the full moon kit, if nothing else, <laughs> or like you said, bioactive carbon, which is helping the binder declare the toxins. But let's say you feel like you have more issues, you know, you want, you don't want just minimum, you really need to get in and make a, a big dent in some of this. What do you recommend starting with? So we have a protocol process, which means um, in the, we have four four main phases and the the four phases the beginning part is before you start just pounding everything and killing stuff off and getting reactions to stuff let's prepare the body and so and part of the reason why we do that is that what i did in my journey is i would come in and kill lyme off and babesia and these infections and knock them down right and then they would come back and what i learned is if i can get my energy and immune system up then these infections will stay down but i kept doing this for five years so you, you feel good and you crash, you feel good and you crash. And, and so the process of getting the person prepared is you need to then upregulate mitochondrial function and immune function, as well as open up drainage. So we're not detoxing yet, we're opening up drainage so your, your body can start eliminating the toxins and the, the pathogens which produce a toxin byproduct, because that's what you react to is the toxin byproduct of the pathogens, not necessarily um, the pathogen itself or the infection right. itself. So by opening up your body, preparing it, then you can really clear things out. So the fir first phase, we focus in on drainage and we focus in on uh, energy. Second phase is where we get into the gut and that's where we start to introduce products that like the Momosaputica product and the parasite products to then start clearing some of the parasites and yeast, fungus, par bacteria, all that in general. Uh, binders that will to, to bind on some of the toxins to clear those out as well so there's less of a reaction. And you're, and you're creating a better, cleaner environment, continuing drainage through the process. The second part, we get into the kidney, liver, to where we're making sure we're supporting those areas. First phase, we have a product called Tudka Plus, which really gets the bile flow moving. And, the, and, and then there's a product with the intestinal mover that moves the bowels and gets those, because lots of people have uh, constipation issues or they just need to go to the bathroom more often, especially when they're detoxing. So um, we, we, we get it going through that process. And then in phase three, we add more, more, uh, uh, the second formula. So formula two or pair of three, the, uh, it's a tincture and it works really, really well. And I think I've anti tried that one. I think I've tried formula one or formula two. I haven't it's tried it. Right. Oh, okay. Formula. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I should I'd love to try it. And I just, I just, I just can't speak enough to everyone. If you're listening and you feel like, yeah, maybe you should try that. Like seriously try it because when I started the supplements again, I was like, well, maybe I have something, but you know, I, I, for me, the biggest symptom that I had was just like a not having as much energy as I felt like I should. Like I just, I'm a very energetic person and I just was like, oh, I'm just kind of tired. I just didn't really have as much motivation as I felt like I should have. And you guys, I took these parasite supplements and like I had amongst other things, a massive tapeworm. Like I'm talking like this, like it was like a good inch, inch and a half wide. Like, and I don't like, I mean, who knows how long I've had that, but I mean, that had to have been what, at least 10 years or something based on it to be that size. To be. Yeah. And so, and by the way, this, I've been going to health practitioners and stuff for years and no one had ever caught this, but for it to have been there that long, it had to have been going on for quite some time. <laughs> well, you could have stuff for 40 years. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Is, you know, most practitioners, they don't, they're not trained in this because they can't no. find it on a test. So you got to use common sense and you got to do research and or energetic muscle testing, biofeedback, something that will, will show things, so, you know, to, to get this stuff because it just doesn't show up. And, 
You know, it's yeah. interesting. You know, I worked with uh, Mimosa Pudica product for three and a half years before I launched it out to the public, right? So I worked in my clinic, did research in three other clinics. Um, and, and then this new formulation, I worked on it for two and a half years. So the tincture of dialing it in to make sure I wanted to, to address all the different parts, whether it was the egg, the, the, uh, the larvae, the, the adult form of the parasite, and, and to be potent for specifically strongyloides threadworm, which is something I struggled with and then lots of other people struggle with. And it's a really, really hard parasite to eradicate because the whole life cycle is within us. And I probably had it for so many years. Well, gosh, it, it's, I've had people take and like, all right, get up to higher doses. So, because the lower dose, it can create headaches, you, de you know, you detox. And some people are like, you know what, you just need to go high. You got a tapeworm in there. Let's see if it gets the tapeworm out. And literally that one gal taking three droppers four times a day. And with a day and a half, she passed like a four foot tapeworm. Another wow. guy I recently did six droppers three times, three times a day. And within five days, he had a six foot tapeworm come out. And then tons of liver flips. Like people are passing lots of liver flips with this. With yeah, this I... I, I feel intuitively like maybe I have liver flakes. So tell, can you tell me about that and how, how would you know you have them and, and what do you do and how do you clear them if, if you think you have them? <laughs> well, sometimes people have just boring pain at times in, in their liver. Other times there's a fluttering. I used to have this little fluttering thing going on. I'm like, okay, that's really weird. Um, but sometimes most people don't know. But it's such a common, it's one of the most common parasites in the world. And so with that being the case, it, People, almost everybody that I know that I see in the clinic has them, has yeah. liver flakes. They've been exposed to it through um, uh, fish, through, uh, you know, meat, through something, through, a, you know, through a vegetable, what, whatever it is, there's, there's lots of modes of transmission, but everybody seems to have them or, um, or a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people do have them. And, and uh, you know, you may have this relatively low, you know, low problems or hardly any problems, but then have your liver flukes come out. And they, and they can block the bile production, or not the bile production, but the bile flow through the liver um, and just have you know, optimal digestion if they can affect that quite a bit. So clearing them out, I think, is really important. So that, you know, this, this, this formula has worked really well and even fast as people have, I've challenged a few people to you know, stop just taking two or three drops or five drops for months. I'm like, no, you got to get enough in there that's going to do something. Yeah, right, right, you might have yeah. A headache, you might have a headache or a bad headache or something like that for a few days, but you're, you're going to see results, you know, when it really happens. And, you know, you're going to have less problems if you actually go through the protocol because it's preparing the body to deal to, to deliver, to get rid of stuff. Yeah. And so I think most of my listeners are going on the, the microbe formula side. So what is the, that one called? Um, like, Cause I think there's different names for each. That's yeah, formula two. That one's formula, formula two. Formula but two. Okay. The, the other formula one and the mimosa pudica prepare the body to be able to go after right. the formula. This is just okay. a more of an aggressive tincture where formula one is, is an irid based formula that addresses all the three doshas. Um, it's, it's mild, very mild, but uh, it is effective. And then I bring out the bazooka with that tincture and you can taste the clove in it for sure. Yeah. And I use, I even put it into a, so people use it in neti pots. Um, I have a navage that pushes the water in and it comes out the other side that I'll, I'll use. So I'll put drops of that. So I'm flushing and rinsing out because we can get parasites in our nasal sinuses, you know, fungus mold in there. Um, right. If you're fighting, you know, like this right now, you feel like you get exposed to it, go do nasal flushes. And yeah. one of the best things you can do to prevent getting sick and getting it from your nasal sinuses in through your throat to your chest is to be rinse, doing rinses in your, in, your, in your sinuses all the time. Great. And, and once again, if you want to try that, it's tinyurl.com slash clear parasites. And yeah, there's lots of supplements, you know, you guys have uh, minerals and, uh, you know, not just the stuff to clear parasites. But I, I, one thing I'm very sensitive to, uh, like extra ingredients that are often put fillers and things that are put into supplements. And so I would say like, I'm not even kidding you, probably 95% of supplements, I can't use them because they have all these fillers that my system is just like, Nope, <laughs> I'm just not going to have that. I, you know, I just immediately have digestive distress and it doesn't feel good, but I have really found your supplements to be very high quality and you don't have those like fillers, which I really appreciate I'm because because the thing is, those fillers, those are just for packaging and they make it cheaper and easier, but that has nothing to do with like the ability to improve health or, you know, help with symptoms or anything. So I think it's frankly garbage that that's happening in the industry. <laughs> it's a good filler. People use a lot of rice stuff and yeah. we have zero fillers and other ingredients on our product is just the capsule. 
So right. Sheer, right. It's gelatin or whatever. Yeah. And then we add we add in all the drivers. So our lipophobic humix, our extracts that we put in there allow protect the products as they go through the digestive system. So we get high potency, and that's why you've seen such good results for yourself. But yeah. thousands of people around the world is that be, is they're getting high potency from the what they're taking, and it's life changing for them. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, do, I just think this is so important. I really hope that with everything going on, people um, consider this. I, cause I just really feel like so many people that think they're healthy and you know they're getting sick from coronavirus or other things and they think they're healthy. And I'm like, actually, I don't, I don't feel they are. And it's just a really good time to really address our health and dig into a deeper level just because you're not really ill. <laughs> Doesn't mean you're healthy. I know you've had some incredible... Uh, stories. I saw you at a, you know, HEA um, event in Colorado, and there were several people talking about, you know, things they'd experienced. I, I know I have my own experiences, but can you talk about some of the success stories you've had of people that have gone, you know, from low health to like really improved with being on your supplements? Yes. Yeah, so one of the first patients I had uh, probably about four, five years ago, and, and we only had a, you know, one, a couple products back then, but she, uh, she was having hives every day for a year. And she was just, it was affecting her whole life. She was 65 years old and very difficult. So I put her on parasite stuff. And, and within 10 days, she passed a six foot tapeworm. Another guy that you my, on my Facebook page and website, he was holding up a, he was holding one up six feet long. He passed over four of them, at least that he knows of minimum that he, he cleared out of them. And like, wow. And he did live in Brazil and was exposed to a lot of stuff in Brazil more so, but we get exposed to things in the U S um, I've seen um, really so many cases. I had a little girl in, in Florida that had a severe urinary bladder pain, um, had seen all these specialists that came up with nothing. Um, and so her, her mom was referred to me. We, we spoke um, and I did some of my energetic testing and came up and came up with the hookworm. It's just its own. And then, did, then, I, then I dive into the research. Like, is this true? And like one of the main things, urinary bladder pain or just bladder pain as, as a symptom. And then like, okay, how did it happen? So then I went back, got more history. You know, we identified the weekend. She got it. She was swimming in a lake, warm lake at the in Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. You know, ideal opportunity for getting infected. So I just said, look, this is what I think it is. I referred her to a medical doctor, gave her a medication because it was an acute issue um, on an antiparasitic. And within three days, the pain was gone. Wow. You know, I probably say this girl from lifelong issues of bladder pain and yeah. urinary issues. Um, there's, uh, you know, I work with a lot of people with mold toxicity. So they get exposed to mold and then they get Lyme and they get viruses and all these different issues. And, and so we've been able to create products that help to bind and clear those, those mycotoxins out, get their, their energy flowing again. Um, you know, doing all these nasal rinses with the biomolecular oxygen, yeah. with, um, with the formula, the formula two, um, I have some new stuff that we've been creating a nasal spray that we've been creating. It's going to be phenomenal. Um, I've been working with it myself um, and, and to clear out the Marcons, MRSA, a lot of infections and, and biofilm up in the sinuses, which will be, I think, groundbreaking for a lot of chronically you know, ill people. But I mean, I could go story after story on parasite stuff alone, let alone, you know, all the other stuff. I, I had a gal on the biotoxin binder. So the bioactive carbon biotox that um, goes in there and buys, bar, you know, binds these mycotoxins, but also binds like ammonia and byproducts from Lyme disease and from other infections and um, also has an affinity for different toxins as well. And her son was having over 25 seizures a day and couldn't go to school. So he missed first grade, second grade, and half of third grade. And um, had gotten, a, gotten a, um, a hold of one of our bottles and... Uh, literally he was able to go to school again, like his seizure yeah. stopped, able to do a third grade and they were running out and we were out of stock. So she was kind of panicking because I want, she wanted her son to finish like a whole mm. thing, a term of school. And luckily one of the, one of the people in the, in the Facebook page was able to send some out to us that we could send to her. Oh. But, I mean, it was just the, the, the text I got from her just super long about how they spent over $50,000 just in the past year trying to find something to help him. And that one bottle, made all the difference in the world. And yeah. Gave us, right. Yeah. Cause if you find something that works and I do, I think there's a lot of people with kind of mystery health issues where this is the case. And, and, and I, by the way, I'm not being 
critical of practitioners, you know, doctors or otherwise who aren't finding this because I think it's just not taught and it's just yeah. not in the awareness for most people to do this. And a lot of times they don't show up on tests. So, you know, according to the data, it looks like everything's fine, but you know, it's not <laughs> in a lot of cases. Exactly. That's why we're, you know, we're, we're doing our own um, workshops, seminars, and now we're training doctors. So we've had two of them um, this, this year, October, and, and then in February, and we have an, another big one coming up in August. So you had to come up and come I would love to. I would love to. Where is that going to be in Boise? Boise? Okay. Boise, oh, gosh, yeah. I'm really hoping that everything settles down by then. And yes, I would love to. <laughs> but it, we... We're, we're giving all the science. We're, we're actually going yeah. through it, teaching all the science and the correlation between these people. Like, wow, their minds are open. And, yeah. um, and then we're also helping them with assessment forms because if you're not going to get it on the lab test, then how else are you going to figure it out? So then we help provide right. the assessment forms to guide the doctor to figure out, okay, hey, yeah, this patient could be struggling with parasites. They could be struggling with mold or it's Bartonella or it's Lyme or it's toxic heavy metals or whatever it may be. We're, we're actually giving the training to doctors of, like, hey, we're taking functional medicine to a whole new level of, right. of how to get outside the box of just giving a million, you know, million pills of nutrition. And let's just give stuff that's gonna clear out the problem and have the body work on its own. And yeah, it's and been, I, been fantastic. And I think, you know, the, uh, overall, I think the supplements are very gentle. I mean, when you start killing off the parasites, you know, you may, you may really, you know, you may have some feelings from that, but, uh, I, I feel like they're, they're not going to damage like this. I felt so safe taking them, you know? And so if you, I just feel like try it and you, you just might be really surprised. <laughs> I was, but at the same time, sure. it made so much, uh, make sense in terms of, you know, why I was experiencing what I was experiencing. And I just feel like so many people have this. So gosh, this has been really great. I, I hope that many people, listen and, you know, are able to have their own, you know, health improvement journey. And by the way, if you have, I think any, uh, a number of underlying health conditions, it's very likely that you have some, you know, some kind of in infection or co-infection because your, your body is just suppressed, your immune system is suppressed. Can you talk briefly about that? Like why, you know, if you might have, you know, diabetes or, you know, whatever, why you might actually also have parasites? Yeah, Holda Clark uh, did some research in the 70s and 80s on this stuff, and she talked about, say, diabetes, for example, um, being related to pancreatic flukes and then also toxins. So the combination of toxins along with infections that create problem and dysfunction. And I, I think a lot of times maybe the toxins can create an environment where the immune system can't fight the infections the way it needs to. Um, and, and when you look at autoimmune disease, there's, there's either a virus, there's a bacteria, there's a, a parasite, there's some type of infection, but also toxin, whether it's toxic heavy metals, you know, these, we're exposed to so many glyphosate, you know, glyphosate, pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, fungicides. I mean, you, you name it, it's, it's everywhere. We can't get rid of it um, and we can't avoid it. So that's where, you know, taking and clearing these things out of the body makes such a difference on how our body responds both the immune system and the energy system. And then, and then from there, um, we get healthier because how can we have a good microbiome? So one of our sayings is a healthy microbiome is a healthy you. Mm, you can't just clear okay. parasite. You have to clear the toxins so you can recreate the healthy microbiome. Uh, otherwise, parasites can come back easily. So yeah, we want to yeah. build that person back up to where they can keep it at bay, keep it in the right balance. So one of the things I was reading about recently, which I thought was really fascinating and made a lot of sense to me, was how... The, a lot of um, issues with our reproductive system might actually be parasites. So there was this long blog post I read about a woman who um, had um, endometriosis and she'd suffered like acutely from it for years and been on this medication, nothing really helped. And then she stumbled upon something that said, oh, you might have a parasite. And she went on this, you know, antiparasitic and like immediately had, had improvement. And so, you know, I, what about the reproductive system in particular? Because I think a lot of people don't think of parasites in that part of the body for whatever reason. I think we're more used to thinking about it in the digestive system. So parasites can be throughout the whole body, especially the lungs. So anybody has asthma problems, oh. any type of like this COVID stuff, right? If you get a healthy, good, you clear the parasites out, then your immune cells are going to work a lot better. They're not going to be suppressed. But the the other thing is, is um, in, in the in, in, in that area, fibroids, you have fibroids, you more than likely have a ton of parasites. And what about cysts? Cysts as well. 
Okay. So they, I had they like develop, the ovary it, syndrome. So that's what you know, kind of got me into a lot of this. Yeah. So they, they wall things off and they can also affect the hormone production. So by clearing the toxins in the, in the parasites, they, you know, it, it makes a big difference. I've had phenomenal results with um, people being able to get pregnant or being able to, to, mon to now manage their, their periods so much better, how to have a healthy period versus one that, you know, I've had some crazy, you know, two weeks, full month, just having a period all month long. And I mean, I've seen, you know, poor women go through a lot of struggles or having severe cramping and all the severe PMS stuff. You get to look at why that is. It's not just a hormonal issue. Something's driving in that issue, that hormonal and problem. And what about uh, severe mental health issues as it relates to parasites? I know there are some brain parasites that can cause, mm -hmm. you know, what we would think of as schizophrenia, uh, you know, but can you share a little bit more about that? And so if you do the research on showing how they react during the full moon, that goes to show you the influence of parasites within a full moon time period on, on these people. So specific ones will in inhibit the neurotransmitters and brain function that creates the schizophrenia. So uh, there is a high correlation with parasites and schizophrenia, but also I think there's also a high correlation of schizophrenia and, and toxic heavy metals. Mm, okay. Very interesting. Oh, yeah. Mark, I find Mark this an example. fascinating. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and by the way, I just think so many people have these toxins that don't know, like when I got a hair test several years ago and was just shocked about like, you know, so many, uh, radioactive metals and, you know, things that I'm like, where is this even coming from? But yeah, it was there. And, you know, it, it doesn't lie. I mean, it's not like it can just show up random, you know, without it being in your system. So even if you live what you would consider a pretty clean life, I think we're just exposed, you know, in so many from the air, from the water, you know, from food and, and yeah, when you have heavy metals, you, you're more likely to get uh, other infections, correct? Because the heavy metals kind of feed some of these different types of uh, parasitic creatures. <laughs> yeah, they can, but they also it, they also impact the body's ability to make energy. Mm. So, so then the immune system comes down, and then they just proliferate. So then, then your body's not signaling, "Hey, there's somebody here." Your body's like, "Oh, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Good to see you." Uh, instead of saying, "Hey, wait, you don't belong here. Let's get you out of here and take you out." And, and, and so that's, uh, there's, there's a, a, a problem when you can dive in deep into the biochemistry, but in the PDH complex, electron transport chain, different parts of the, the mitochondria get suppressed with, with the heavy metals, toxic metals. Right. And, and so they break down and you think about your brain, your brain has about 10,000 mitochondria per cell. Your liver has about 2,000 mitochondria per cell. The there's parts in your brain, the substantia, substantia nigra, for example, that part of your brain has 2 million mitochondria per cell. So it, 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 the brain has a high, high need for energy to, for function. And if you have some toxic metals in your brain that can happen and occur, then it's going to lower the energy function and your brain's not going to work the way it needs to. Now these oh. to Alzheimer's, which is at all time high now, neurological disease, brain fogs, you know, all the things you were talking about. Yeah. So great. Yeah. So, uh, so there's several levels at which you can try these supplements. So the, the bioactive carbon, I think everyone should have period is <laughs> just cause it's such a good detoxer and then full moon kit. I recommend that. But then what again are the different phases? If you want to more, you know, okay, so the first phase, approach? first phase is energy drainage prepares your second phase, which isn't the gut in that we're starting to, to deal with clearing things out and, 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 uh, and helps the immune system. And third phase is going more deeper into parasites and also, getting into more drainage processes. And the fourth phase is really diving into heavy metals and toxins. Um, there's another food called phase five, phase five, but more that's more of a supportive phase where if you have Lyme and, and Bartonella, Babesia, some of those things that can come into phase four and help clear right. some of those deeper infections out. Um, we all probably have some type of deep infection, so it supports the immune system on multiple deep, deep infections, but those products have been proven really well to, to work with and support the body at dealing with um, Lyme and, and uh, its co-infections with that process. So um, you could take that in a four month protocol. We used to do that. Uh, the people that I have that are a little bit more chronic, I go, I tell them to do it in a 10 month protocol. So okay. do, do the first phase for a month, then bring in phase two for two months, phase three for two months, then phase four and, um, for up to five, for up to four or five months with, with those products because it takes a while to clear all those toxins out of the body. Mm. 
Right, right. Yeah. I mean, it just makes sense to me, you know, if you've been developing these things over years, it's not going to be like, bam, and then like immediately <laughs> it's resolved. Detox, like, detox yeah. Journey. It's a journey. Yeah. It's not an event. It doesn't just occur and you're done. Because you well, more toxic, yeah. more exposure, and we need to, you know, like the biotocarbon metchem, for example, that helps to bind metals and, and chemicals and these, all these pesticides and herbicides and stuff. I give that to my kids all the time. Because yeah. I know they're getting exposed to whether it's in water or food, uh, in the grass that's being sprayed all over the place, and their you know soccer fields and baseball fields, football fields, um, it's in it's in the air, uh, it, it's everywhere. It's in the rain. Seventy percent of the rain has glyphosate in it, so you yeah. can't avoid it. So you just have to know how to, to work with it. And we have the foundation, which is a combination of three different binders to to clear out all kinds of stuff, and we have the, the biotox, which really goes more after. Um, helping the liver and dealing with mycotoxins and toxins from infections and things. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think you brought up a really good point, which is even if you clear everything out that you currently have, we're constantly being exposed. So that's why I think something like the full moon kit is important. Just, it just keeps, you know, keeps clearing things out. So every month, you know, you're at least hopefully keeping some things at bay. So they're not getting out of hand because, you know, I'm just amazed that, like you said, it's in the water. If you're drinking municipal water, it's, you know, you can be exposed to parasites, even if you're a vegetarian or vegan, you know, through the vegetables, because, you know, they'll put manure or whatever on the vegetables. So it's just, I think it's just all over and not to make everyone afraid, but also just, it's so important to be aware of that. Yeah. We're, it's just part of life living in this earth. You're going to get them. So can your body keep them at bay or can or do they just kind of overtake stuff? And so, yeah. you know, I give my kids at least twice, three times a year, go through and give them products to help clear parasites. I worked on mine for at least a year straight, took 10 different products to, to clear stuff. So it, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't occur just immediately. I mean, I wanted to go deep and really make an impact on my health. So I worked on it for a while. But, you know, I've been working on my, it took, took me, you know, like I said, almost 10 years to get yeah. me to where I feel now here at 51, almost 52, feeling amazing, you know, like, like back in my 30s again, where my 40s were severe fatigue and all kinds of other issues. Yeah, I feel like a lot of things that we think of are as just like natural aging or not at all. <laughs> uh, and because I, I went through a similar thing. I, I mean, I had parasites at the time, even though I didn't know it, but I also had, you know, polycystic ovary syndrome. I had a lot of allergies and, you know, hormone issues. And I just remember thinking, well, this is what it's like to just get older. And honestly, it's like, no, that's not it at all. Because I, the things that I had then, and that was like now, oh my gosh, you know, 12 years ago um, or more, I, and I feel better than I did then. So it's definitely not an aging thing <laughs> or it doesn't have to be. I think what typically happens uh, for people as they get older, they just get more and more infections and more and more toxins. And then of course your body's not going to be able to keep up and you start to deteriorate. But I think there's a lot of things of natural aging, quote unquote natural that are, that are actually just toxins and infections. <laughs> Absolutely. Even, even uh, I had arthritis at 40. How do I have arthritis at 40 and injuries all the time and headaches and severe yeah. allergies and all these things that are all gone now. And I don't have yeah. any of those issues anymore. Yay. <laughs> well, this has been so fun. Again, if people want to try these supplements, it's tinyurl.com slash clear parasites. And again, they have other supplements besides uh, the parasite protocol. Do you think the parasite protocol is really important? Thanks so much, Todd, for being back on the show. It's really a pleasure. And uh, do you want to give anything else? You know, social media handles, email, whatever else you'd like to share. Yeah, he has a uh, one more education. Microformulas.com has a doctor live with the docs every Wednesday. You can learn from us, which is always really good. And, um, you know, just keep a positive attitude in time of stress. Everybody's stressing out, worrying about this, but just, you know, there's nothing we can do to control the situation. Just make smart decisions and have your faith and, um, you know, have positive mindset and, and provide love and service to other people. It goes a long ways for your health. Amazing. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. And thanks for everything you do. I think your work is so important. And I'm really glad you're educating, especially doctors on this, because I think there's so much education that's needed. So thank you for doing this. And thank you for taking the time. All right. Take care. Thank you. And thank you, everybody, for listening. If you'd like more information about me, you can go to my website, healingpowers.net. You can find me at Twitter at that Laura Powers, Instagram at Laura Powers, and uh, sorry, Instagram at Laura Powers 44 and Facebook at Healing Powers. Thanks for listening.